Hey guys, welcome up to season one, episode nine of Bones. Here we go. Christmas! I love Christmas! In my world, Christmas begins on November 1st. I didn't go last year. Yeah, exactly. And it took me weeks to collect all those photocopies. I need you. I don't like St. Christina. The idea that we are forced by convention to exchange meaningless gifts. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know. If you rearrange Secret Santa, though, you get Secret Satan. What possible thing <laughs> have? Eyeball to eyeball with Skeletor. Who? He's a cartoon villain who looks like, you know, self-explanatory. <laughs> I don't know what that Could means. Could you please just come to this party? What's wrong with a little Christmas spirit? What's the context? <laughs> oh, it's a suicide. He shoots himself in the head and somehow his arm ends up across his chest. Bring the skeleton and I'll prove it wasn't a suicide. Merry Christmas, Bones. <whistles> Come on, boys, bring it! We oh, got no. it! I'll do a cursory examination and I'll meet you in a few minutes. All right. Damn. It won't Ooh. be a few minutes. Will you scored Angela? Really last minute, important Christmas shopping that I gotta do. It's not last minute until tomorrow. <laughs> Bones. Bones. Just stop. Robot reminds me of you. You tell it to turn, it stops. You tell it to stop, it turns. You ask it to take out the garbage, it watches reruns of Firefly. <laughs> the voice recognition protocols. Hey, we've got about half a liter of pure alcohol here. It's up in the eggnog, and we've got the best Christmas party in history. God, I want friends like them. Because they're funny, awkward, and so helpful in so many different scenarios. Crystal Accounting is after you, isn't she? Oh, like alien after Predator. Sit. <laughs> Two open tickets to Paris. One way. I thought you were at the party. Oh, yeah, it wasn't a party, it was a Star Wars convention. This was still in the skull. You really think Goodman's gonna let you spike the eggnog after the 4th of July fiasco? Oh, we may have to Jeez, Bones, Merry Christmas. Okay, people <laughs> listen to me. There is a party going on upstairs, okay? A Christmas party. We're going up there. We're gonna drink some eggnog. <laughs> you are going to kiss me under the mistletoe. On the lips. I might kiss you guys under the mistletoe too. Maybe even you, in a festive, non-lesbian manner. But we are going to the party. <laughs> Wait, why do you have to wear a mat just because of all the fumes? That's biological contamination. The doors seal automatically. Were you conforming to autopsy protocol? One of us was. The other was drinking an eggnog. And you didn't have your mask on. Oh. Oh, God. Hey, I got into the decontamination shower with Zach. Haven't I been through enough hell? <laughs> so contagious. Dr. Hodges may have exhaled the spores all over us. We have no choice but to impose quarantine. Oh, Probably God. Anyone besides me worried that a guy dressed like Santa is in charge? Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is fatal. I will shoot both of you. That's, that really sucks. That <laughs> really sucks. In addition, I found this sewn into the lining of his clothing. A woman's wedding band. Two tickets to Paris, a wedding band, a picture begins to form. Childhood tibia break? Bad enough that he walked with a limp. Also, hmm. he wore a toupee. It couldn't have looked good. Interesting. This is a cocktail of four antifungal drugs. We won't know for a couple of days if the fungus took hold in your system. Whoa, 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 whoa. Days? We're stuck here over Christmas? I'm supposed to go to Quebec. Hey, whose oh, fault is this? Oh, God. You forced me to go to the party where I drank too much and had to hide from Crystal. Oh. I should have cut into a bone with a drunken fool in the room. Who brought us human remains just to ditch a little paperwork? Oh, wait, you're saying that this is my fault? <laughs> you the could not resist. Well, I'd have been able to resist if I was not sure <laughs> where I wanted to be. You're blaming me. Ladies and gentlemen, early symptoms mimic a common cold. What if it manifests? First treatment protocol involves extremely painful injections into the base of the brain. You know what? I never realized how pretty all this shiny stuff is. <laughs> so not fair. <laughs> Tomorrow I was supposed to leave for Quebec. 
Christmas is going home to Michigan and heading into the woods with your brothers to cut a 12-foot Christmas tree. And you all decorate it together. Brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews. 40 people who all love you and are happy to see you. That, my friend, is the true meaning of Christmas. You are stoned, Agent Boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Let's hope it lasts long enough to keep this from being the worst Christmas of my life. We have family traditions, most important of which is being together for Christmas. Wow, that's beautiful. Help. I have a kid too. His name is Parker. You have a kid? He's <laughs> four years old. I need your help. For what? To make Christmas. Why? Because we're the girls? Yes. <laughs> we have to decorate. And we have to make our own yes. Santa. <laughs> you called it Secret Satan before. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do for Christmas. Good. Thank you. At last you decide to take part. I'm gonna solve murder. <laughs> After midnight. Hmm? Christmas Eve day. Both an Eve and a day. It's a Christmas miracle. Still undoing your medication, I see. You don't seem too upset about missing Christmas. Indications are that Christ, if he existed, was born in the late spring and that the celebration of his birth was shifted to coincide with the pagan rite of the winter solstice so that early Christians weren't persecuted. Damn. <laughs> are you like the Christmas killer? You hate Christmas, so you just spot out all these facts. You ruin it for everyone else. I'm making them work on a, a case about a guy who's been sealed up in a fallout shelter for 50 years. Well, how would you like me to spend my Christmas? In a helicopter pilot? Oh, right, right. You, you can't measure the man upstairs in the beaker, so he can't possibly exist. The man upstairs. Mm, you know, you don't know if you're sick, but you're more than willing to take drugs just in case. It seems to me you could get the man upstairs the same benefit of the doubt. You do an invisible fungus. <laughs> oh god. This is funny. Where'd this come from? She's still uh, wearing her freaking over this morning. Very appetizing. Uh, are you back with us? Yeah. I think so. Okay, since we're gonna be stuck together for Christmas, we should make the most of it. Oh. We'll decorate this place and exchange handmade gifts. An excellent idea, Miss An Montenegro. excellent I'm idea. As am I. I spun a little story about two young lovers running off to Paris. But the man never shows up, and the woman is left wondering what happened to him. And I say, imagine what that must have been like. And Brennan says, I don't have to. Yeah, I, I still don't get it. <laughs> oh my god. What? Brennan's parents disappeared just before Christmas. That's why she hates Christmas. She never knew what happened to them. That makes sense. Oh god, that explains a lot. I could build a random generator. Uh, wouldn't no, it be better to ask complimentary people in a premeditated man? I got five numbers in my head, five letters. You tell me the number. Everyone talks so. Well, are the letters sequential or the numbers sequential? Oh, yes. Six. Six. Just pick a name and get your own. Put it back in. Oh. That could work. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Ben sees the house of a man named Gil Atkins in the 60s. They think too deep. Ben's being the only jewels on art. Atkins built the fallout shelter in 51. He sealed it in 58. God. He died in 83. I got good men for this secret Santa thing, and I don't know what they're doing. And anthropologically speaking, gifts are a way of asserting dominance in a group. Now imagine an entire holiday devoted to self-promotion, especially in this materialistic culture. How can you expect me to get behind that? How can good you get God. Behind? Wow. Oh, that's deep. It's a very deep <laughs> You came to me with information this morning, a peace offering, but it was to make you feel better, not me. Proves my point. Any idea what this is? Oh. Me neither. Try Dr. Goodman. You are going to make it very, very hard for me to be nice to you. Very festive. They'll probably give us cancer. That will be fitting this Christmas. Tidings of joy, gentlemen. Tidings of joy. Family and friends make Christmas. We're friends. <laughs> he was like, friends. no. We are. Colleagues, friends, co-workers, yes, but for a father like myself, like Agent Booth. A few glowing test tubes I'll make up for missing Christmas morning with the children. Excuse me? Be kind, rewind. Booth has a kid? Ah. Well, <clears throat> not common knowledge, I gather. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought I might uh, take a look at the contents of the suitcase with you. Why? 
Uh, things cobbling together Christmas decorations out of my beds. He's ideas. trying to apologize. <laughs> and I'm qualified to look at clues. Well, I'm an archaeologist. Female handwriting. How did you get that? How did you, yeah, how did you get that? handwriting is a snap. Dearest Lionel. I know envelopes, no return address. No signature either, just this drawing of a leaf. It seems to be dated from some... Looks like a four-leg clover. Clo yeah, clover. Early winter of 1958. Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> yep, thanks for calling. You heard what happened, right? Seems to be some kind of a pouch. You don't have to see me. Sid agreed to bring him by. Don't make me beg. Thank you. Everything all right? Damn. At least I'm an accidental Grinch. All due respect, you're the Grinch on purpose. I have no idea what you're saying to me. The Grinch is a relatively well-known creation of a children's author named Dr. Seuss. Listen, <laughs> I'm not to anything. What I want to do is blow up the microscopic imagery of a toxic mold, Stecky Boatcher's Chartonum, because I know she's very interested in fractal imagery. I thought that what are you I'm saying? Scared. I'm not really who you want to talk to about guess what? Ruth has a kid? <laughs> you didn't know? No. I wasn't the one who told you. Everyone's finding this out. Fall 1958. Hilarious. Heavyweight suit. They kept the records. We made me want to find Kevin Lionel's last name. Wow. Kevin Lionel? There you what go. What are you so worried about? Well, considering how he ended up. Wait, you have a son? Yeah. You've never mentioned that. Well, nothing brings people together like a Christmas lung fungus. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. When? Picked up his new suit on November 7th, 1958. So like, but you he have a son! He was supposed to come back the next day. He never showed up. It was his wedding shirt. <laughs> Whoa. Bless you. Uh-oh. Is that belly fever? Oh, shit. Oh, that's oh, bad. I sneeze because the air is dry. It's not belly fever. Oh. Pregnant in trouble? Oh, apparently careful Lionel wasn't so careful. <laughs> a pregnant girl in Oklahoma in the late 50s. You suppose Lionel came up here to procure oh, an abortion? God. You know, this isn't a very Christmas Eve type story. All right, some people believe it's more than just a myth. Well, who besides you? That would be me, Dr. Brennan. I'm a deacon at my church. I do. Christmas and Easter, anyway. Although I believe organized religion is just another political movement designed to control the masses. It doesn't mean God doesn't love me. Hey, I'm a rational empiricist all the way. Unless you talk to my mother, then I'm Lutheran. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand why you'd be sensitive, Booth. You have a child out of love. Sweetie. What? Um, uh, the letters display a combination of both block and cursive. Oh, that was bad. A combination of printing. She and is so clueless on the things that she says. Sometime in the second grade, it was illegal. In Oklahoma? Not just Oklahoma. Here in DC. Then why come here? Uh, they're yeah. running away. Lionel had two tickets to Paris. I mean, where else in 1958? They were running away. A man and a black woman get married. You guys might recognize my dad, but I don't really want to talk about it. So, thanks. Okay? That's all. What? <laughs> what? You guys might recognize my dad, but I don't want to talk about it. Aw. <laughs> Who's that? What? a TV show thing. I don't know if I recognize him. I don't think I do. But then again, I feel like I do. She's the only one that didn't have someone come see her. It's very beautiful. It's not done yet. He snuck down and made Christmas trying to do the right thing for me. Christmas for his little sister. But when I came down and saw the lights and the presents, you thought your parents were back. I just expected to see them sitting there. Ah. In the coffee, watching Russ and me open our presents. Oh my God. I kind of lost it. I refused to open the presents until they came back. 
It was like I told Russ he wasn't in the family for me. Before New Year's, he went out west to work, and I was in the foster system. Excuse me. She deserves happiness. According to the missing person report <laughs> lodged by his boss in January 1960, Lionel Little worked as a lease inspector oh, for okay. Silver Cloud Petroleum out of Tulsa. How, I didn't know you could get your legs house. through there. Yeah, you know what? Gil Atkins, yeah, he made out about $8,000 selling those coins. Atkins killed Lionel for a coin? How much is that now? $8,000 in 1958 translates to roughly $64,000. Careful, Lionel gets a young black girl pregnant. He sells. His How dare I <laughs> even ask? So I knew they were gonna answer. <laughs> Does uh, this look like an Ivy Leaf to you? Ivy Gillespie, race. Ivy Gillespie may not even be alive, and if she is, this could she, be a reminder of an extremely painful time of her life. She'd be like seventy or eighty years old. You have to find the girl and tell her what you know. Merry Christmas, Ivy Gillespie. Your fiance was murdered and your life is ruined, but hey, at least you get to know what happened to him. Don't you wish somebody had said that to you? She's got a point. Yes, I apologize. I should have started with Merry Christmas. <laughs> a date of birth. Wow. You found Ivy Gillespie. I spoke to her granddaughter. Thank you. Wow. She will. Because it's Christmas. Yes. <laughs> this is a very calm episode. That's impressive. Very impressive. Oh. You made this? Yeah. Thank you. I'm next. That's nice. Oh, it's my family. Wow. <laughs> and me. That's Thank really you. good. You're welcome. Sacred Scarab. That's excellently rendered, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I thought if we get out of here in time today, you could give it to your son. Merry Christmas. There we go. He's <laughs> so like, huh? Oh. It's not just a penny, it's a 1943 bronze one cent piece. Look, all I'm saying is that maybe the real gift is Those are rare. something with a little grace. A handful were struck in an old style bronze planchet. Only about 12 of them exist today. How much is it worth? Over $100,000. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for our test results. Oh, snap. That's good. Merry Christmas. I'm at Wong Fu's if you decide you want company. Merry Christmas, Pons. Go! Go with them! Excuse me. Oh, hell yeah! And you can figure that out all this time later. He had these. Ah, damn! What a simple yet amazing episode. I have something even better. Hundred thousand dollar penny. What could be better? It's given me back my life. Oh, that's great. Hundred thousand dollar penny. Did she go? She went. I know what happened. You told her about careful Lionel. You showed her the, the letters, the tickets. She cried, but you made her happy. Not to mention I gave her a penny worth over $100,000. You just gave somebody the best Christmas gift they could ever get. Who's the secret Santa now? Stop. <laughs> oh. Merry Christmas. I have a feeling she's gonna find out what happened to her parents. That was such 
you know, it was such a different episode than the others. Slower, calmer, you know, more, you know, not much going on. But it was done really well. That's the difference between mediocre and great. Is how you're able to do episodes like this. Bravo. And I will not I will not take away anything else from, from that greatness I just watched. Like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you have not already. I will see y'all next time.